called the Bible. If you notice, uh, Sunday, every verse came after another, after another, after another, to emphasize the cause of following Christ, what it takes to follow Christ. In the uh, morning hours before the service, we did answer a few questions, and that first question was what it means to be a true Christian. And then we read a couple of verses, and we ended somewhere. And today we want to pick up from where we ended. So the last question that we answer was what does it mean to make Jesus our Savior, our Sovereign Lord? What does it mean to make him our Sovereign Lord? And we had among the answers we are reminded of 1 Corinthians 6.10 Jesus bought us with a price and for that reason we have to glorify him with our body in our body in our spirit because they all belong to God and then in the last discussion we talked about ownership rights, that we do not have ownership right to this body and that spirit that is in this body. <coughs> it belongs to God and we are his stewards. There we have the only thing that we have management responsibilities. You have to manage the body well. You have to manage the spirit well. What do we mean by that? Let me re-emphasize and then we'll go to the next point. This basic realization is the foundation of Christian stewardship. What realization? have no uh, ownership rights, but we do have management responsibility. Good stewardship, the businessman says, is the wise management of God's property. Good stewardship is the wise management of God's property. And what is God's property that he has given us to manage? The first thing is you are the first property of God. Secondly, you are her. It's a second property of God. Your money God's property. Your time is God's property. Your treasury, which is the same like many, is God's property. And of course, your talent is God's property. So, how you invest as a steward. It's another property of God. Know where to invest. You remember the story of the uh, servants that were given gifts. If you know the first one invested and got double, the second one did the same. But there was a third one 
Who didn't want to get into trouble with his boss? And for that reason, for that reason, uh, he went ahead and dug the ground and buried the talent in there. And when the boss came back and was getting the report, he came out and said, well, I know you are a hard master. I know you reap where you don't sow. So I don't want to invest your property because I know if I invest it and I don't make it again or it gets missing, I'll be in trouble with you. So I buried it somewhere. Here it is. Take your property. He did not invest his master's uh, property. And then he brought his own complaint. And then the master had to punish him. We want to be very careful with what God has trusted us to invest and invest it wisely. He has trusted us with that name, his name. He's given us his name. He made us in his image. And we have to live according to his precepts. In a, that's the illustration we just had is from Luke. But in Acts chapter 3, verse 19, we are given some kind of a command. Listen to it. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. So that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Okay? When the stray man, the sinful man, the disobedient child of God <coughs> has gone astray and then come back to his senses and repent and forsake the things of the world and decides to act, to stay with the Lord, the Lord is going to forgive those sins. The, the Lord is going to clean those sins away from your life. And then the Lord will give you a refreshing time. And not the kind of refresh men that we have here on earth. Some people say you go to massage parlor and get some massage to be refreshed. Some people say you go to the beach and take a, a leave and go somewhere and relax. But the refreshment that the book of Acts 319 is telling us comes from the presence of the Lord. And that is something you can buy. That's something you must deal with, something you must handle, and handle well. God's gift cannot be bought. Amen? Amen. We all want to save you, don't we? So many of us have already committed to that Savior. But there are still so many in the world today that needs a Savior. To be a disciple, we need a sovereign Lord. And how do we accept Jesus Christ as a sovereign Lord? That's what we're going to discuss in the few, next few minutes. Step one, 
we need to give him the place in our lives that he deserves and requires from us. How do we do that? The simple word is repenting from your old ways. Repentance. Some time ago we defined the word uh, repent. And let me remind ourselves with the meaning of repent. Somebody says repent is like turning, making an about turn. Make an about turn. You move away from the distractions that have been keeping you away from God to the presence of God. You move away from the things that uh, brings you pleasure but displeasure to God. You forsake those things. And this usually comes as a personal decision. Because nobody can force you to repent. People can encourage you to repent. They can teach you what repentance is. But you have to make that decision to step away from your old ways of life and then get a BA. 